So, can you crossbreed two different species? Up in the northern parts of Canada, there's a species of bear that's mostly white with some patches of brown fur. It's not a grizzly bear. It's not a polar bear. It's both. Or more accurately, it's a mixture of the two. Scientists like to call them growlars or pizzly bears. You take your pick. And they're what's known as a hybrid species. That's where two completely different species get together and make babies. And there's actually heaps of examples. Zebra and donkey, zonkey, whale and dolphin, wolfen, cow and yak, jo, camel and a llama, karma, and a lion and a tiger make a liger. Okay, so it's clearly possible to breed two species that look pretty similar. But what about some wackier combos? A giraffe and a hippo, a kangaroo and a flamingo, a centaur, a griffin, or in the words of the Simpsons, the legendary Esquilax, a horse with the head of a rabbit and the body of a rabbit. Yeah, Esquilaxes aside, these combos are a bit harder. And it's all got to do with a bit of science, a bit of biology, and a bit of what makes a species a species. So back in 1942, this guy, Ernst Mayer, came up with something called the biological species concept, which kind of defined what a species was. He said that a species is a group of organisms that can successfully interbreed and create something called viable offspring. We'll get to that in a sec, but basically if two different animals can't make babies, well, they're different species. Generally, there's two mechanisms stopping different species from interbreeding. And hang with me here because we've got some sciencey words coming up. So there's prezygotic and postzygotic mechanisms. Prezygotic is everything that happens before an animal gets pregnant. So there might be a mountain stopping two species from meeting, or they might look so different they'd never be attracted to each other, or it's just not physically possible to breed in the first place. Postzygotic isolation is everything that happens after an animal gets pregnant. So if somehow two different species had babies, when those babies grew up, often they wouldn't be able to have kids of their own. That's what inviable offspring is. You know that thing that Ernst was talking about earlier? Yeah. Most of the time, this has got to do with an animal's DNA. DNA is a bit like our body's instruction manual. It lives in our cells and tells each cell what it should be. One might become muscle tissue, the other might build our brain. DNA has to match up really precisely for it to work properly. But when two different species try to make babies, well, the instructions become muddled. Let's go back to the growler bears. Grizzlies and polar bears aren't the same species, but they are pretty similar. So it's a bit like using a set of instructions for a bicycle and a set of instructions for a car to try and build a vehicle. You probably won't get anything perfect, but you'll get something that kind of works. When it comes to humans and animals, well, that's a different story. The more different the species are from one another, well, the more confused the DNA gets. Humans aren't like any animal on Earth. We split off from chimpanzees and started doing our own thing about seven million years ago. So even if for some weird, strange, odd reason that I don't know what it is, we wanted to make a human-chimpanzee hybrid, it just wouldn't work. Recently, some studies have suggested that our DNA does actually have part of another species in it, Homo neanderthalus. Humans and Neanderthals roamed the world together only 45,000 years ago. And although they eventually died out, we have around 4% Neanderthal DNA in our body today. This means somewhere in our Homo sapien history, we interbred with our Homo neanderthalus counterparts. Hmm. And even though we were different species, because we looked similar, had very similar bodies, and had very similar DNA, we created human-Neanderthal hybrids. 
Creating new species by breeding two random animals is extremely rare, even in the wild, and it's a pretty heavily debated topic within the scientific community. So, as cool as it might sound, don't put a narwhal and a horse in a cage together. You won't get a unicorn. Sorry. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you hit subscribe down there because we're going to be putting out heaps of cool new videos and I don't want you guys to miss out. Catch ya!